Hey guys, welcome to Chief Pigskin's YouTube channel. You're about to watch a home clinic where we find one quality coach and he talks on one very specific subject. If you'd like to see more of these come your way, please like and subscribe below and check us out at clinic.chiefpigskin.com. What's up Chief Pigskin, it's Coach Blair again. I'm excited to be bringing you another uh, triple option home clinic. Uh, today we got head coach at UConn High School, Jeremy Reed. Um, UConn's coming off a season where they led all of Oklahoma with 405 yards rushing per game. So how are you doing, Coach? Great. Thanks for having me. Well, why do you guys choose to run a, a flex bone triple option offense? I'll get into a little bit of that in my PowerPoint, but um, for the reason of UConn, it's just, it fits our kids. Uh, we, we are a little different than the rest of the 6A schools, which is the largest classification in Oklahoma. Uh, we play in the very toughest league and schedule that there is, and uh, it, it allows us to be different for one. There's nobody else that runs the option, much less really even gets under center. And then I think from a program standpoint, it really uh, brings to light the things that I, I choose to hold at the top as far as uh, what I think a program should be built around uh, with toughness and unselfishness. And I just think this offense brings a lot of program building uh, traits. So this offseason, I went to a, a quite a few like flex bone clinics and, and winged football clinics. And I kept hearing your name and UConn High School is like a great example of what high school triple option offense is. So, so my question is, what do you guys do that, that sets you apart? Why, why do I keep hearing about you? Well, I think number one reason is, is my connection with Coach Kenny Wheaton. You know, him and I are, are best friends and talk just about daily. And I know that uh, a lot of people reach out to him, and, and he's, uh, in my opinion, the, the best there is when it comes to the triple option world. As far as what we do different at UConn, you know, we, we have a foundation of Harding and believe in some things that I'll talk about in our, my PowerPoint of what they do. But uh, the neat thing about uh, our staff is we're, we've been willing to kind of morph what we do offensively into, into what we do. And uh, I think uh, the number one component of that is my staff. You know, I've been blessed with a great staff everywhere I've coached. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about this one in my PowerPoint. But, you know, what these guys do and, and their knowledge of how we operate as an offense is, is pretty uh, rare, in my opinion, in high school football. And so, um, you know, we do some things different schematically that I'd be glad to talk to people about today. We're not going to talk X's and O's, but I'd be glad to, you know, get on a Zoom or, or share some things that we do schematically if people are interested. You know, we do a lot more formations than maybe uh, a Harding would and maybe some different tempos, and uh, maybe a few different schemes. But uh, overall, I would say, you know, what sets us apart is our staff and how we get it coached and, and really the attention to detail that we have on every single uh, snap, whether it's in a game or in practice. Awesome, awesome. So uh, you're going to give a talk on kind of practice and preparation. So give everybody kind of an overview or an introduction to what you're going to talk about. You know, when you asked me to do this, I was kind of searching for what I thought might give coaches the, uh, the best uh, look in to maybe help them out no matter what they're doing, whether it's an option offense or not. And, and so today we're going to talk about planning for success and uh, how that looks for us in an off season and what we look at to base what we're going to do for the next year and some of the things that we utilize to, to uh, come up with those things. And then we're going to talk about what practice looks like. You know, I think the reason we're successful is because how we practice and, you know, we're non-contact 95% um, of the time. Uh, we're very high repetition. Uh, we're always going to coach off a of film. Um, we do coach in practice, but we're going to get, a, we're going to get 180 reps a day of, group drills that's not counting um, individual that's not counting some you know one-on-one -on -one throws with quarterbacks that's not counting some um, service time with our defense and so we're going to go over every practice drill today and, and talk about what that looks like Monday through Thursday awesome awesome so you can go ahead and share your screen start your presentation let's start here with a with a powerpoint um, you know today I just kind of uh, came up with a with this saying plan for success and practice with purpose. You know, I think uh, the way you become successful is, is how you plan for that. And then I think throughout the week is where you win football games, especially in an option offense. Um, at the bottom, you'll see our, our program mantra, Fight, Finish, Faith. Uh, 
you know, that's huge for us at UConn and, and what we do in, in our program. And it's based off of Second Timothy 4 7. So uh, always, always want to be able to throw that in. Um, just a little bit about me, and we hit on some of this. So I'm not going to bore you. Uh, but I transitioned to the Flex Bone in 2013. I was a a spread guy at the heart uh, as, a, as a player in high school, as a quarterback leading the state of Oklahoma. Uh, one year in passing, the next year I was second. But uh, as an offensive coordinator, you know, leading the state and, and throwing the football around. and uh, Had always been a spread guy, but in 2013, I was at a school that had more 0-10 seasons than winning seasons and realized that we had to do something better for our kids. It wasn't that our schemes were bad. It was – we need to do something better. We had one kid coming back that could run under a five flat. And so it was that year that I transitioned to the flex bone. Uh, prior to uh, that season, you know, I'd been a head coach for three years uh, at two different schools and, you know, my overall record, which really means absolutely nothing, but it was 13 and 17. Uh, since then, seven years in the flex bone, uh, 47 and 29, which I know was not earth shattering or, or going to break any records by any means. Uh, and in the midst of that, I was blessed to, to be the head coach at Altus, Oklahoma, uh, a 5A school where we won the state title in 2015. I've mentioned already my mentor and great friend, Kenny Wheaton, uh, who is, uh, in my opinion, the best there is at, at talking uh, triple option football. Uh, him and I have become phenomenal friends since that day in 2013 that we connected and talked just about every day. And uh, if it wasn't for his knowledge and and our uh, phone conversations and camps and all the different things we've been at together, there's nowhere, no way I'd be where I am today. And he's a, he's a phenomenal influence on me professionally, but also as a person. And uh, just can't say enough things about him. Um, I'm very fortunate and blessed to have great friends at, at the Naval Academy, at Kennesaw State, Air Force, and Army. You know, through recruiting and through this offense, I've just been able to uh, – establish some, some great friendship, uh, friendships and be able to visit all, uh, all those places with the exception of Army, haven't been to West Point, but uh, just can't say enough about those staffs who have really given me a lot of access to uh, their knowledge and what they do. And, you know, a little bit of each one of them has uh, come into our program at, at some point. Our offensive staff here at UConn, I wanted to share um, – uh, these are some special guys. Um, there are multiple guys on this list that could be coaching at the next level, um, all the way from D1 uh, or down. And as you can see, uh, there's four of these guys that are graduates of Harding. That's a big thing in our program as far as uh, how we do our, our foundation and our fundamentals. We believe that Harding does uh, those things in a phenomenal way, uh, how they practice, which you're going to see today. But I just can't say enough about these, these five guys. Uh, they do a phenomenal job coaching our kids from an X's and O's standpoint, but even more than that, the relationship piece that they bring to the table is second to none. Uh, very, very fortunate to have uh, those guys. Uh, throughout the last seven years, just kind of wanted to share, you know, what it's looked like in, in my world of uh, Flexbone. Uh, over seven years, we've averaged 29 points a game. Uh, the high being in 2015 at 41, and then the low uh, was actually the first year I put this offense in uh, at Dixon, Oklahoma, and it was 24. Ironically, uh, in that year, we went six and four um, in 2013. So, you know, there was a lot of really good things that went on in that first year. Uh, over the last seven years, we've averaged 321 rushing yards a game. Um, our high was this past season, uh, 405 yards a game in 2019 at UConn. Uh, UConn's a 6A school. We have uh, right at 2,600 kids in our high school. Uh, I believe we're the, now the seventh largest in the state, uh, maybe the sixth. Uh, but we play a, a very, very rough schedule. Uh, you know, we play a lot of teams that are going to have many, many Power 5 guys. And, uh, you know, we, we don't have those type of players on a Power 5 level. So. Um, it was a phenomenal year for us offensively. Uh, ironically, our lowest year was uh, the previous year in 2018. Uh, we only averaged 264 yards rushing. And so uh, our staff really went to work and, and looked at some things and our players, uh, you know, looked at some things and, and what a turnaround in one year. And then over the last seven years, we've averaged uh, seven wins a season. 
So now we're kind of getting into the meat of what we want to uh, talk about, and that's planning for success. I think that is one of the things that, that I know we do and take a, a whole lot of uh, attention to each off season. You know, every year is a different year, uh, different players. You know, sometimes you may have a different coach or coaches. Um, you're going to have different opponents, different defensive coordinators. So we have a, a series of five things that we do each and every year. Number one, we're going to evaluate our personnel. Everything has to be driven around us. Um, you know, what are we returning uh, to our football team? You know, what are the strengths of that and what are the weaknesses of that? And we have to take a lot of uh, a deep look into that. I think that's the number one thing in high school football is figuring out what your personnel can and cannot do and be willing to be flexible with that. And so, uh, although we're going to move past that one pretty quick, that's really a very long and deep conversation. And uh, we do a lot of different uh, things together as a group, uh, offensive staff group to, to really figure out that personnel. Number two is our opponents. You know, how are people defending us? Uh, like I said before, we're the only team in all of 6A in Oklahoma that runs the option. And so we're not going to get any film based upon seeing what other people are doing to the option. And so we have to be ready for everything. And how we practice is very crucial for that. Uh, I listed over the last three years how we've been, been defended. Uh, 2017 was our first year there. And you can see there was some balance to that as far as a a 4-3, a 50, both being four times. We saw what we call the 5-1-5 that, you know, Houston did to Navy uh, several, several years ago that became popular, uh, a bear-type front with a, with a mic and then a, a deep monster and two high. And then we saw <clears throat> the 4-2 just one time. Go to 2018, and 4-3 uh, was the answer. You know, everybody was getting in a 4-3-50 combo, and, and um, I will say every week we see multiple fronts per uh, – per each opponent usually. Very rarely do we see one. But there in 2018, you know, we saw the base uh, three. Uh, well, we saw the 4-3, the 50, and the 5-1-5. Uh, flip to 2019 this past season, and, you know, who would have thought we'd have saw the 4-2 six times after only seeing it one time the previous two years. Uh, then we saw, you know, the 4-3, the 50, and the 5-1-5 uh, four times, three times, and three times. So I say all that to, to uh, emphasize You've got to understand how your opponents are, are defending you and, and see, you know, are your uh, schemes and your, your answers to what you've got in your package equatable to if somebody comes out in the 4-2 and you weren't expecting it possibly. Uh, number three is uh, padding. I started this several years ago. I know there's been uh, talk over uh, social media and Twitter the last year or so about what Bill Belichick is doing with that. Um, but it's something that I've been doing just because of not seeing film of other opponents. You know, I want to use everything that I have to get my team and, and myself and our coaches ready. And so we chart every play of every game uh, in an off season. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, then the fourth thing we'll do after all that is then we start determining the schemes for the year. You know, what does it look like that we need to carry based off of our personnel, our opponents, and what we got out of our, our evaluation of padding? And then the last part after that is planning the week of practice. Um, so a little more in-depth personnel. What is our best unit? You know, is it our offensive line? Is it our skill positions? You know, is our quarterback uh, a great runner? Is he a good runner? Is he a good thrower? Is he a bad thrower? Uh, you've got to figure out where's your best unit. And you want to know how you can build some of those uh, schemes around some of your best players. Uh, right now, it's no secret our A-backs are very talented. And so we're going to make sure that we have multiple things to get them the ball. Uh, we're always going to make sure the B-back is, is going in the offense, no matter what we think that level of B-back is. Uh, we've got to make sure that that is a position that makes our offense go. Uh, what does each group do best? You know, we've got to understand what our offensive line does best. We may want to be a team that, that pulls some guards and do some pulling type schemes, but if our guards can't move, it's irrelevant what we want to do. We've got to do what we can do. And so we've got to look at each group and go, what do they do best and what is their weaknesses? Uh, you know, we love the flex formation. Well, if you don't have receivers that can block uh, a defensive end or, or a linebacker, uh, sometimes that formation will get you in more harm than good. So you've really got to do some honest evaluation as a staff and, and figure out what is best for those position groups. And then for us, we have a process of, uh, core four that, that I got from Coach Chestnut at, at Kennesaw State. 
how does each player grade in the core four? Uh, what the core four for us is, uh, let me flip over here. So here is uh, our, our core four, you know, be back for an example. That's uh, the position I coach, um, ball security, uh, pad level, footwork, meaning tracks, or could be uh, backside blocking technique on, on a toss play, uh, playing without the ball. You know, how are they on blocking? What do their fakes look like? Are they um, shoulders over knees, knees over toes, arms together, getting four yards with or without the ball, uh, pass protection. So I'm going to look at those four core, and I'm going to look at each player. And if there's a player that's only got two or three of those versus a player that's got four, obviously the player that's got four is going to be the guy that's getting the reps. And that's going to be each position for our whole staff. Our staff uh, comes up with these core four, each position coach, and we establish these each and every year. We share them with our kids. They're, they're on the whiteboard in our meeting rooms where each group is. And, you know, this has become a very easy uh, tool for us to use uh, for grading out kids as far as uh, who, who needs playing time, who needs reps and who's executing at a, a level we feel comfortable putting on the field. Uh, let me flip back over here to, to where we were on the PowerPoint. So that's our, that's our personnel. Uh, next is our opponents. Again, what fronts did we see? You know, I think a lot of teams, when they're playing, uh, option teams come up with a plan in the off season and, and they practice it uh, multiple times uh, before the season starts and through fall camp. And, uh, they're going to stick with it. And so there's no way of knowing uh, what's coming, but we need to have a good mindset and a good knowledge of what's uh, been done in the past. You know, is that the same defensive coordinator? If it's not, did he come from a school that he defended the option? Uh, if he did, what was that team doing as far as were they a true flex bone team uh, that, that is relatable to us or were they more of a maybe a wing T team or more of an I team? You know, just doing some research to figure out, you know, where he came from and how he's uh, defended the option. You know, what returning players are back off of each team? You know, is there, is there uh, linebackers all back? They all graduated. Did their D-line uh, return a bunch of players? You know, just figuring out what guys are coming back. And then through padding, what techniques, fundamentals, and coverages did they play against us? You know, through that process, I promise you, you will know your opponent inside and out of how they played you. And once you start compiling a book like I have, I have uh, binders, uh, three ring binders. You know, if you've got a, a staff that's been consistent over the last three years, well, I can show you three different years and you can start seeing some uh, possibly differences or you may see a lot of similarities in maybe how they're uh, doing things. <clears throat> uh, on the subject of padding, uh, each play of each game is charted by hand. I have a piece of paper that's got, I believe, eight different squares on it. And I'm going to go through there and I'm going to draw uh, each uh, play. And, and typically I'm going to go by formation. So I'm going to go through all of what we call spread. You know, I know for the last game I was padding, there was 29 of those. Well, I charted all 29 and, and charted every defensive player of where they were depth wise and where they were uh, technique wise. You know, was he in a 20? Was he in a 30 as a linebacker? Uh, was the mic at five? Was he at seven? Did he fit tight C gap? Did he fit almost uh, out to more of a D gap? We're going to chart every single play and figure out, you know, what those kids were being taught. Uh, each defensive position is diagrammed according to their fit. We want to know how they're fitting uh, the difference between triple, mid triple toss. You know, what are they being taught as far as flow and, and tracks of the B back and path of the A back? And then at the end, there's going to be a summary of each game. I'm going to have a, a formation chart, and we're going to have a summary of each game. And we're going to look at that as a staff and talk about how they defended each formation. What did they do differently? They were in a 2-I 80% of the time. They were in a 3-I 20% of the time. Uh, and those are just examples. But we're going to be highly in-depth and, and know our opponents uh, in and out on what they did. Uh, schemes each year and how we decide. We're always going to carry the big, what we call the big six uh, that's never going to change. And then we're always going to have uh, what we call mixers. And we refer to those as fixers. Uh, there's going to be three to four of those each year on top of our big six. You know, I'm fortunate to be at a school where we only play players one way. And so, you know, we're not willing to carry over uh, usually uh, nine uh, at the very most 10 schemes total in the run game. 
You know, I've been at schools where I did not have that much time and that was going to look more like seven uh, run schemes. And so, you know, you've got to figure out how much time you have relatable to practice time to how many schemes you can practice properly. And that's going to be uh, dependent on your time at practice, in my opinion. And then all those schemes, whether it's the big six, it's the mixers, those are based off of personnel first and opponent second. You know, what do I need as answers in my toolbox on a Friday night? Uh, and then practice planning, uh, it's based on the schemes that we determine uh, for our Monday uh, through Wednesday. So I want to share something uh, real quick with you that we call our offensive guide. It's something that, that um, we have as a, as a staff on Google Drive that we call our guide, and this is from last year. I've, I have deleted out all of our tag words and things, but just wanted to give you kind of an idea of what this is. And so right now I'm on the run game page and uh, this over here uh, where it says midline, that would normally be, you know, what numbers we use. And then the tags below it, but the yellow means we're carrying it in 2019 and the non-yellow means, uh, you know, that's not a tag or a scheme we're carrying. Uh, then we're going to have a column that says, why, why would we be running this play? Um, and then the defense that it's best against, and then where are we going to practice it? You know, for me, uh, if we can't find time to practice it and, and have intentional practice uh, with it each and every week, it can't fit in our system. And so uh, this whole uh, spreadsheet here is every scheme we use. <clears throat> and again, it's giving us as a staff um, common language and understanding of what we're doing. As you can see, there's some, there's some things on here that, that are – uh, highlighted and there's some things that are not but we're going to be very intentional about where that, that play is used at uh, what defense it's against and then the practice time um, you know so for example our midline double play um, with double insert that's when number two is folding inside uh, usually that's against uh, a four three but if we have any doubt of number two we're still going to use it and that's our practice time group pod um, a tag that uh, allows um, our, our backside A to go in motion and stay in toss motion uh, because number two is a pitch player and so forth and so on. I'm not going to go through all these, but just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like and how we organize, um, you know, our staff and how we look at different things. We do the same thing on the pass game <clears throat> over here. Uh, this will be our play action off a of triple. And we've got, you know, these three routes for this year uh, that are highlighted would be ones that we're using. One of them uh, says the best play it's a, versus an aggressive defense. Uh, could be against any defense, and we're going to rep that one in half line. This one's versus a hard roll. We're going to take a shot. Uh, we're going to rep that one in something we call team mix. This one was against a fast-flowing defense. Uh, we're going to rep that one in team pass and mix. And so, again, we're just not leaving anything for doubt. We're gonna make sure that everything has a purpose and everything is very concise. Uh, you know, there's been years we've carried sprint out and boot. There's been years that we haven't, but everything's in this guide that our coaches have on their Google Drive that they can refer to. Then we even get as in depth as going to packages and I've deleted everything out of here, but you know, these are different columns of different packages we do uh, in our base offense. Uh, we do get into some eye stuff that we'll see on film. And here's some things we were doing out of the eye. Here were some things we were doing out of uh, two minute. Here's some different motions that we use. And we would list the, the ways and the plays that we would use under that. And then down here we have our short yardage goal line unbalanced uh, column. Uh, again, we just want to make sure that we are very intentional with the detail of how we organize our offense and it's accessible for all of our uh, all of our coaches. And then the last one here that we're going to look at the most today is our weekly practice schedule. So this is always going to be uh, done way before August, before we start. And each day is already planned out prior to uh, you know the season ever happening. You know, in parentheses here, 18 means there's 18 offensive periods, and then each number out beside is. Uh, indicator of how many periods we have per that um, that particular drill in practice and we're going to go through each each day of this um, here in just a second but every day's got its own its own set of stuff and so 
you know, for us, uh, opener is our team opener. We're, we're going to start with a, a team opener on Monday of red zone. You know, we're going to have our ones, twos, and threes uh, going against the ones, twos, and threes, good on good, and we're going to go red zone, our offense versus our defense. Um, and that won't be on the actual presentation, so I want to make sure I covered that one. And uh, on Tuesday, uh, we'll do the same thing, but now it's third and medium, you know, so it's one play at a time, ones versus ones, twos versus twos, threes versus threes. We've got the chain set up. It's third and six. What's coming? And so as an offensive group, we're working that as a defensive group. Um, and then we'll go through all of Wednesday, and then we'll look at all of Thursday. But the point of this was to show that <clears throat> from an organization standpoint, our staff is going to have a, an understanding far before the season ever gets there of what our practice schedule is going to look like. Over here shows how much individual time they're going to have each day so that they can well in advance start looking at how to plan their practices uh, for the season. So let me flip back over here to, uh, to the PowerPoint. Um, and let's, let's flip uh, over to Monday. Um, Monday for us at UConn in 2019 was 18 periods of, of offense. Uh, that was uh, what we had for that, that day. And then we would have uh, four periods of um, team service. And we had uh, the two team openers. Our special teams are done in the mornings. We have our kids first hour uh, for weights. And so we get uh, our lift and our special teams in in the mornings. And then in the afternoons, it's all offense and defense. So here on Monday, uh, our practice on the offensive side would look like this. Team opener for two periods. And we're going red zone. All the red zone uh, that we can get in 10 minutes. And the pace of that is set by the coaches, you know, depending on what time of year it is, how many reps we want to see. Uh, then our, our uh, group's going to run immediately to individual, individual for three periods. That's 15 minutes. Uh, if any of you guys are, are wanting to see what we do in individual, feel free to reach out. Uh, be glad to get you in contact with our staff and, and who coaches what position. Uh, we'd be glad to share that with you. And then we're going to jump into option drill. Uh, we're going to go through that in a second for, for three periods or 15 minutes. Then group pods for three periods or 15 minutes while the receivers – and a quarterback is uh, running some routes and, and working on some of that one-on-one uh, -on -one stuff uh, inside for three periods or, uh, or 15 minutes. Then we have our half line uh, on Monday. We go uh, three different segments of the 4-2, 4-3, and 50. And then we have our team pass segment. And then at the very end, if needed, the defense will service us. You know, we've done different things for service. We have a team rotation period that we – utilize the ones, twos, and threes, and rotate that um, where maybe on the south end it's one versus ones and they're getting nothing but the 50 defense there. The twos are on the sideline on a break and the threes are on the, on the north end getting a 4-3 defense and they get four plays and rotate. You know, maybe early in the year that's something we do. Or uh, There's multiple things you can do. And sometimes we, we don't even do that uh, because we, we're good. We, we don't feel like we need any live contact. Um, so let's, uh, let's flip over here uh, to some diagrams that I have off of, uh, off of just play. And let's look at um, these practice drills. Good to go there, Garrett, to see that? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> looking at uh, group pods. Uh, group pods, uh, I've got written down here kind of where you can see, uh, is used to practice our zone dive and our midline double play. Uh, this is going to be everybody but the wide receivers. The wide receivers are getting extra um, individual time during this. And then we uh, utilize group pods twice per week. Some people um, only do it once, but with our extended time, what I think is extended time, you know, I was used to getting about 10 to 12 periods of offense. Um, prior to coming to UConn, we, we're going to do this twice a week because we think this is a very important thing for us. And it's going to be 15 minutes at a time. Um, you're not going to utilize your backside A on this. You're going to save his legs unless you're in the early stages of implementing this offense or maybe you're having some uh, timing and path issues. But uh, in practice film, you're, you're probably only going to see uh, the front side going. We have specific fits when we get to this. Every day of the week uh, no, or whenever we're doing this, this is not going to change. We're going to get a three tech and a five and an up stunt. We're going to get a two I five with an X stunt. 
or we're going to substitute that with a shade five lightning. That'd be a four, three look. And we're going to go through this in diagrams and then a zero four I X. So we're going to get those fits every time we do zone dive. <clears throat> Same thing with mid double. We're going to get those fits every time that we go through the midline double series. So if I click over here, I've got these diagrammed out. Uh, this would be our first fit. You know, we're going to get a three, five up. And so what that means is we've got a three tech and a five tech that are played by our coaches. And, and you'll see this on film in a second. Our ABEX coach is the play side backer. And then we've got a kid or a coach on the backside backer that is the backside for nothing more than scoop angles, you know, where we can work tight scoop versus long scoop. Uh, the quarterback coach always stands out here uh, to, the, uh, to the play side and, and about eight to 10 yards out there. So the quarterback, as he hands the ball off on zone dive, is getting what we call a super fake and trying to burst to our quarterback coach to bring a guy with him. We wanna practice those fakes just as important as we practice the reads. And so on this scenario, I know that my B back is gonna get a sink, meaning he's gonna sink underneath the base block of the uh, play side guard. And so I can be looking at something else standing back here as the uh, guy calling the plays or the head coach or whoever, whoever you term as your guy back here. And I know without looking, this should sink into a gap based off of the fits. Uh, all groups will go, whether that's one group or it's always going to be two groups or three groups for us. And early on, it could be four. Uh, so we'll go through that one. Then we'll go to the two I five X. So we're going to have a two I a five and we're going to do what we call X. So we're going to get a cross face by our O line coach. Our a back coach is going to fit C gap. So what should happen on for us on zone dive is our uh, tackle is going to power veer and protect his B gap. So he'll end up washing that B gap defender. Our A back is gonna stay connected to that tackle and see that and he's going to end up blocking the backer and turning him out. And that every time should be what we call a slide and square where on the four step, the B back will get right outside that uh, tackles block and fit inside the A backs block and be on a track right through here. And so, you know, it's predetermined. We know what's coming as coaches and we can be prepared for that. The third fit is a, an odd front fit. So we're getting a zero, a four I, and we're getting another X. Now we will have a nine, te nine technique standing here, but for the purpose of the drill, we're gonna have him be a pitch player. So we're gonna have him stand, uh, stand here and then step out so that we get either by rule a down block by our, uh, our, uh, our tackle, which is, a, it's a power veer, but he's already in the B gap. And then the, uh, Sam linebacker would be over the uh, top scraping uh, to C gap. And so we know it would slide and square it outside of that. And we can also tag, uh, you know, our double team of a B gap defender right here and get an automatic uh, slide and square where we stay outside of that. Uh, so anyway, uh, this was the uh, substitute for the uh, uh, 2i5x. We'll go a shade and a five and we'll do a lightning stunt where number two or an easy stunt, it's called two will blitz the B gap and number one will step outside. So in this, the tackle should power veer and pick up that blitzing backer and this A back will run his vertical track and if he feels pressure, he applies pressure and if he doesn't, he keeps running. We should get an ace right here with the guard and center on that play side shade and then we still have our backside scoop angle. So the whole premise behind this whole thing is we want to show our kids all the different looks that they're going to see, you know, such as a guard. You know, here he goes from a three to a two eye to a shade, and then he's uncovered. Well, it doesn't matter the defense we're seeing, four, two, four, three, five, one, five, bear. What matters is that, that player seeing the different techniques, if that makes sense. Um, let me uh, flip over here and let's watch a, a few clips of, uh, of group pod. Can you see that okay, uh, Garrett? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, I did not pick out um, like great clips. I just, I'm clicking on a folder of our practice stuff. So uh, there's gonna be errors in here. And I think that's how you see that, you know, not everybody's perfect. I didn't pick out clinic film. Uh, so here we've got a three and a five. Um, so we should see, the three and the five, we should see these two guys connected and we should see a sink right here. We should see our uh, 
center get half of a gap and run his track okay what's wrong right there the b back did not sink okay this was a new b back we had this year uh, this this was a, a, an error that he made by not reading his action key okay so that's going to be corrected i could have been looking way over here but as soon as i saw him go outside as a coach because of how we fit our group pod i knew that he was wrong and i didn't even have to see him here's the uh same kid uh we re-ran that one so, so now he sinks it okay um next group second second group comes in they run it now we're back to group one and we're on the second fit a two i five x so we got a three backside and a five so that we can practice tight scoop tight scoop and have the backside backer tracking across where that guard can see him now i know as a, a coach that this is my action key he's going to see that he is in an a gap and he's going to keep his eyes on him through the mesh and that should be a sliding square our five technique on a two i five x should cross the face of our tackle so he'll end up washing him on his power veer and the a back coach is going to scrape the c gap so that his a back will track vertical and then end up blocking him and most usually would be a turnout First group, here comes second group. And if we have three, we go three. Uh, again, this is my O-line coaches. This is both, I, uh, last year we had two A-back coaches. Uh, down here behind, you can see where we have uh, a quarterback throwing one-on-one -on -one routes with our receivers and receiver coach during this time. Here's our third fit. We got a zero four I uh, X on this one. Uh, we did not have the nine technique out there. And so uh, most likely right here, you're probably gonna see a double team right here. And then our A back will be responsible for the play side backer. And then on the back side, you're getting to work your scoop angles. And then it uh, just flips over to the left side. Okay, so I'm gonna fast forward a little bit so I don't uh, bore you. Uh, then we get to our mid double again we're we're in a 15 minute segment right here and we've worked our zone dive now we're to mid double so we're back to a three and a five uh, on this day the a back coach has positioned themselves in a four three uh, alignment i really don't care what they do as far as four, uh, split backers or if they do a mic that's not uh, the most relevant part to the whole concept it is relevant to this play side a of identifying who the play side backer is uh, a while ago, you noticed in the zone dive, we did not include our backside A, but in mid double on this one, we will because we're going to work our double insert. So now uh, we're getting three, five, three closed. Um, our A back's going to play side backer. Our double insert's going to number two, and our quarterback is replacing and getting vertical. Here just comes the next group right up immediately. Three, five, going. And you can see our kids out to the side. They're on the move. Uh, they know what the process of this is. Uh, it's a high speed. Our practices are high speed, and they're, they're going to be on the move getting up to the line for the next, uh, for the next rep. Now we're uh, going to a 2i5. It's mislabeled at the top. And now they're in a split backer uh, look. So here's the play side backer for the A back. And that's a good example. You can see somebody forgot to tell the backside A to get out. Okay, and he just ran motion. Well, we're at the point of the season, we don't need him to run motion. You know, we, we need to save those guys' legs. I don't know about you guys, but we don't have a ton of those guys. So you can see here on this rep, that backside A is not in there. Somebody saw that and got, got him out. Now here's our third fit, uh, mid-double to, to an odd front. Uh, you can see we, we Brought that nine technique out there because for us, we're gonna, uh, on, this, on this day, we're gonna slice this, what we call slice. Uh, we're gonna out with our tackle. Our play side A is gonna uh, steal the pocket change of the, of the read key, which is this four I to the play side backer. And we're gonna run our mid double concept. He closes, quarterback replaces and gets vertical. And again, this is a great way to utilize all your quarterbacks. You haven't seen our starting quarterback yet. He's, he's down there throwing, and we're getting great reps with our, our uh, second and third team quarterback uh, during this time. And so 
ones, twos, or threes, depending on how many huddles are going for that day, are getting uh, the same amount of repetitions. And that's, a, in my opinion, a great way to grow your players and grow your program that we're not just working our ones or just working our twos. Uh, we're, getting, we're getting really good work by everybody. And again, now this is just going to the other side. So we go each side. Um, so the next drill uh, that, that I'm wanting to spend uh, some time on just to show you uh, kind of what we think is important from a cone standpoint and how we set it up is our um, option drill. Uh, let me click back over here to, to just play. Uh, option drill, there we go. Option drill for us is, uh, as you can see here on the notes, it's uh, used to practice our triple, mid-triple, and our perimeter tags. Uh, this is where we get uh, an enormous amount of work with our skill positions. Uh, this is everybody but our offensive line, so our offensive line is in uh, individual time during this. Uh, we're always going to do this two times per week, and uh, usually it's going to be 15 minutes uh, at a time. There are times where uh, one of those sessions will be 10 minutes. Again, we have fits for this that's never going to change. You know, the first fit's going to be to a 4-2, and we're going to uh, have a 3-5 uh, setup on the play side. Then we're going to get to a 4-3 with a 2-I-5, and then we'll get to a 50 with a 0-4-I. The reason we talk about what uh, the techniques are on the inside is that's that B-back's action key, and we always want our B-back understanding who that is. Uh, the most important part here is how we set up our cones, and we're going to have film and diagrams, but I, I went ahead and listed that here. Uh, we want to have a cone for the tackles. That's four yards horizontal and two yards deep. It's important uh, that those are put where the A-backs can line up properly. We're going to have cones that symbolize the inside leg of the guard. That's three foot from the center. We're going to have those about two and a half yards deep. Um, we're going to have a cone for what I would call the path used for our mid triple primarily, where that is a five yards horizontal and four yards deep. And then we're going to have a downhill cone that's on the line of scrimmage eight yards from the center. Uh, so all of those cones are very important in why we use them. Then we're going to have a couple agiles uh, at different places. One is on the play side, about a foot from the inside leg of the guard cone, and that's used to uh, help the quarterback learn how to push around collision and not get downhill too quickly. And then we're gonna have two at linebacker depth for our B-back to run through uh, to work on pad level, getting his knees up, and, and then he gets a little contact while that happens. Um, and then we've got a hand shield usually that uh, signifies to the B-back where the action key is, whether he's in a zero, a two I, or a three. So let's look at some of these diagrams. Uh, this one's to a four two. Uh, the C's on here are um, signifying where cones are. And then I wrote the word agile where the agiles are. So let's talk about that first because I think that is the most important part. Uh, these C's here are the inside legs of the guard. Uh, that's the aiming point for your B-back. You know, if you don't have those there, you're now risking, in my opinion, uh, his mesh being different every rep. I want to be able to look and see uh, when I click on practice film, that we watch every single day of him going right through that leg of the guard if his path was to continue. Uh, these C's are the tackles. So we wanna make sure that those are at the proper uh, depth and the proper width. And you know, for me, when I set it up, I'm gonna step four big steps from the uh, center cone. And then I'm gonna go two yards deep because we all know that our, our alignment of our offensive line is a vertical and horizontal alignment. So we wanna make sure that we're at a depth that is uh, where he needs to be uh, that's realistic. I can't tell you how many times I've seen film of guys where they're A's and every, everybody's right on the line of scrimmage. Well, that can really mess up your timing. Uh, the next set of cones is the, the C's right here behind the A-backs. That's gonna be five yards, uh, so it's one yard outside the tackle cone, and then it's four yards deep. And that cone is used for multiple things that we're gonna look at here in just a second on film. And then the, the cone out here on the line of scrimmage is what we would consider our downhill cone. We know that that should be where our A-backs fit off a triple as they get downhill and receive the pitch. 
The two agiles are here for the be back to go through. You'll see that on film in a second. And then we'll have a hand shield signifying on this particular uh, defense, the four two, where a three tech is. So when he sees that, he knows that if the ball re if the uh, read is give, that's going to be a sink unless post snap he cross face, which in in this drill we're just doing stationary. So that's the cone setup, and that cone setup will be for every one of these fits. The cone setup does not change, and in my opinion. It's something that's extremely important to get your guys to playing fast and consistent with their pass, with their steps, and with the relationship of their uh, pitch to the quarterback. As far as the 4-2 setup, as you've probably seen uh, on all of our drills, we're going to use coaches primarily uh, in, in every facet. Uh, we just think that we can't err on the side of, of kids giving reads unless we have to. Um, in a 4-2 setup, uh, number one is a five technique, and that's going to be uh, one of our A-back coaches. And the big thing for this drill is we want to make sure our coaches never cross the line of scrimmage. We want to make sure he's a yard off the ball uh, and making sure that he's over here where a true defensive lineman would be if we were in a game. And so he's going to be here. Our quarterback coach plays number two. Uh, our other A-back coach, or we could have a kid, uh, depending on our staff size, playing the play side backer. Uh, a backside receiver, so if we're going to the right, we have a backside receiver play the one high because that's his rules to get across and try to cut off. So it's great to have him as a, uh, a person on the backside so they can keep each other accountable. And then our wide receiver coach plays corner out here to, to talk to our receivers. Uh, so that is the look of our 4-2. Uh, then we go to the 4-3. Uh, nothing changes. Everybody uh, is where they were, with the exception of the receiver coach, now goes back to the high safety. So if we work some tags, and then our uh, second A-back coach, if we do have him, will go out to corner so that he can see the eyes of our A-back. Uh, if that's not the case where we have a second A-back coach, that would be a play side receiver out here playing the corner. And then we always have the backside receiver as the backside safety in this. And then the last fit uh, is a odd front fit uh, to a 50. Uh, the, the safeties would stay the same. Uh, well, everybody would actually stay the same in, in the fact that uh, we still have all the coaches at the same in the same uh, positions. The only thing now is that shield has come over and he's in a zero and number one's in a four I. And so, you know, back here, you know, I'm saying, uh, here we go, let's go 50, zero, four I. And then I'm saying if we have a corner fire or if we have um, a three, two exchange, whatever may be coming. Uh, so let's, let's look at some uh, option drill uh, cut ups. I'm gonna go a couple years back and then I'll come back to this year uh, to show you uh, a couple things. So here, here we can look at our cone setup. Uh, here we have the, the ball, and there's a cone probably right behind that ball. And then there's two cones here for the quarterback's feet that are a yard uh, to a yard and a half off the line of scrimmage. Again, you never want that quarterback up on the line of scrimmage because that's not where he's at in a game. Uh, and if you don't put cones there, the kid doesn't understand why he should be farther back. And so that's the significance of those cones. The uh, cones here – to the right and left of the quarterback is the inside leg of the guard cone. You know, those cones are very important uh, for his path. If those aren't there, he may go too uh, narrow or he may go too wide. The A-backs are standing uh, obviously where the uh, tackles are. So those tackle cones are uh, four big steps, uh, four yards from the ball and two yards with depth. The cones to the left and right of the A-backs that are five yards wide and four yards deep. We're going to talk about those when we get to mid-triple. And then the cone out here to the right, uh, you can see is eight yards. That is our downhill cone. This Agile bag, we've kind of uh, changed since two years ago. That Agile bag nowadays would be setting about a foot and a half uh, to the right of this cone, and it would be even with this cone, so it would be a little more uh, – uh, upfield here or, or downfield. Uh, we want our quarterback to be able to feel that, to push around collision off the mesh and not get vertical too soon. Uh, this scenario here is my uh, B-backs. They've got two agiles 
that uh, we utilize for the be back for when he goes through, whether he gets the ball or he doesn't. We want him to practice having great pad level, which is one of those core four, uh, shoulders over knees, knees over toes, and arms together. And we want him to get those knees up and drive through contact. Because we don't get a lot of contact in practice, I think you got to be creative and find ways to give contact, especially to these B-backs, to work on their balance and feel. So these B-backs are supposed to hit him as he goes through. Now, sometimes you'll get a guy that, that hits excessively. Uh, sometimes you'll get a guy that just love taps. So you got to kind of watch that as a coach. But we really like how this gives our B-backs the feel of uh, linebackers hitting him. And, and I could pull up film from this past season that our B-backs showed better balance this year because of the contact I feel like they were getting in drills. All right, so let's let's go through here. The first fit is a 4-2, and we're working our triple scheme with a load tag. So that means we are loading the play side backer with our play side tackle and A-back. Obviously, in this scenario, we're just working the load with the A-back because the O-line's in Indy. In this drill, I'm standing right behind because I want to see uh, some timing things. At the end of the mesh, your backside A should always be in the play side A gap. Uh, that is our timing mechanism that we want to be able to see. And I want to be able to kind of get an idea before we get in for uh, seeing practice film of where that may be. Uh, and then this cone uh, is set there because this A-back should be outside that cone before he starts falling downhill. So immediately you can see my eyes are there. I can promise you there was something said to this young man about, hey, you got downhill too fast because our kids know once they reach the B-back, that should be a three-step process before they get downhill. We do like to give them the cone as a visual in practice because that right there is not realistic to a game. And so that is another great reason we like using the cones for landmarks of practice of being able to see what's going on. Uh, you can see as far as coaches, our number one uh, coach, he got, uh, squared down or excuse me he turned his shoulders to close at the line of scrimmage but he didn't he didn't cross the line of scrimmage we're not trying to mess any of this up we're not trying to to fool our kids that's a complete shoulder turn that's going to be a pull read you can tell our quarterback coach playing number two is he's got a senior quarterback right here he is standing there on purpose and going to give him a late read because he wants to see him get around collision replace number one and then he turns his shoulders. There's no fooling to that. That is a pitch. And we want to see him fade to the inside and get the ball pitched on the line of scrimmage. We've added a bag here at times. Our kids were very meticulous about how we go in motion. Our verbiage is hands, hands, heels. So his first two steps should be at the hands of the B-back and then through the heels as he gets on his path. So this agile at a slant toward the hands of the B-back forces him to be on path. Uh, we like to use things like that to, to self-correct our kids. So now we're running triple load scheme to the left. Again, there is a, there's a lot here I could coach. The A-back on the play side stepping with his wrong foot. Uh, we're a little bit late uh, on the backside motion. But for the purpose of today, I'm just going to try to stay away from the coaching aspect and just make sure that we understand how the drill works. Okay, so let's go to the 4-3. Uh, again, we are uh, wide receiver coach. This is actually our A-back coach. This is uh, our quarterback coach. This is another A-back coach. There's our backside receiver. So we're working our triple scheme with a switch tag where our receiver's gonna block the play side safety and our A-back's gonna block the corner. And so now we're getting to work some of our perimeter tags. Our quarterback coach and A-back coach are signaling to each other how they're gonna unfold. It may be a lightning or an easy stunt. It may be uh, what we would call just a straight X stunt. They're gonna communicate what they wanna do to give the quarterback different looks during this period. Here, we're getting a quick pull pitch scenario uh, to our, uh, our A-back. Again, I'm uh, probably going to struggle here not to coach up what's good and what's bad about this, but I'll keep moving so that this video don't last for six hours of me coaching the details of two years ago. Now we're going to the left here. Again, the triple uh, switch scheme to a 4-3. Uh, you know, about one out of every 10 times, we're going to give a, uh, a give read to our quarterback just to check him. 
and to make sure our VBAC's checked. And there you can see our VBAC's going through there. He's got great pad level, looks like to me from this angle, his shoulders over knees, knees over toes, and he's getting collision. And so we got a, a good rep out of that. Now we're into our third fit, a 50 fit, um, pre-snap, two's outside of three. So that tells our quarterback that he's alerted for a three-two exchange. Um, and that's a, that's a mental rep we're gonna get during this period uh, each and every day. We're gonna give him some type of three-two exchange, which will make him see that pre-snap. And hopefully this A-back saw it so that he can expect that when we arc who shows, it could be number two being here instead of the corner or the safety. And here we go to the left. Again, pre-snap identification, three, two exchange, get the ball pitched and, and down the alley. Okay, so now we're on mid triple, uh, our midline triple play to a four, two. We've got on a crack tag here, which tells the receiver to go to the one high. Again, this is our backside receiver playing our one high. Uh, now we're gonna get into why these cones matter right here that are our path cones. On the snap of the ball, this is a stationary pitch path for our backside A back, which is through the hands of our B back. So without ever watching, I should be able to look when this uh, A back clears, and he should be between this yard line and this cone, which is exactly one yard. That's four yards in depth. But that is putting him on a proper path to get to this going through the uh, hands of the B back. This cone also serves a purpose for our twirl guy. When we twirl, we're going to push and bounce around this cone and set our plane at four yards. So, again, this A-back coach, even though he's playing defense, he can watch nothing but that cone if he wanted to and see that this A-back gets around that cone and sets the plane, and he knows his A-back's been put in proper position. So, again, I can't reiterate enough, the cones are great, great visual tools for not just our players, but for our coaches to utilize in practice to make sure we're getting proper uh, angles. So there goes the A-back through the hands. There goes the A-back around the cone. Um, this is too close. We want a five yard differential between these two in a perfect world, but their paths are right. There's the A-back right between that cone and that line. What happens if that cone's not there? Well, I believe that kids start drifting. I believe they start getting downhill too fast. But due to this being here, that visual aid, and us utilizing our practice film daily, we're able to teach that and I think get a consistent path by our kids. Here it is to the left. A-back goes through the hands. Okay, I can promise you his A-back coach, even though that's not a huge drift, he's gonna tell him he drifted a little bit because he is right there on that line. He's a little bit deep. And, and this young man was a great player for us, but he did have that uh, tendency to drift a little bit. Uh, so again, just pointing out how we utilize the cones. The A back on the twirl does a good job of setting that plane right through that cone. And now we have that five yard differential that we're looking for as far as spacing. Now we go to the four three. Uh, we use a tag with our tackle to accommodate our four three a lot of times. That's one of the ways, and that's the way we had told the kids on this day. And so, again, we're just watching how we utilize those cones. Again, he drifted, okay? Uh, that is great tools to be able to use to get your pass more consistent. Uh, we utilize the eye uh, uh, in our offense uh, for the uh, triple, mid-triple, and, and some other things. And so here's how we uh, utilize the eye in our option drill. Cones stay the same but we're gonna have the I back uh, tight to the B back uh, here. And he's going to uh, do the same thing he would do. Remember earlier I said he needs to be in the play side A at the end of the mesh. And that's what he's being taught. He left a little bit early here, but we are still working the exact same drill just out of a different formation. Here's triple load to the left now. And again, the landmarks of the cones are crucial for our kids in my opinion, to get their pass consistent and falling downhill. Uh, the I uh, here working the triple switch scheme. And then to the left, triple switch. Uh, the 50, again, there's the three two exchange. Gave the quarterback that look, the safety fit wide, replace and go score. Safety fit tight, 
pitch. You know, we want to give our quarterbacks multiple looks. Now we're in uh, mid-triple. Okay, so we've set our eye back here. Our attached A is over here, and we're working the mid-triple away from the attached A. So now all this guy does is he arcs immediately, and there comes the A back through the hands just like he was doing earlier and right through the path of where the cone is. To the other way. So you can see it's our belief that the cones give you consistency. It's our belief that the looks of the fits by our coaching staff, are they're able to give multiple looks to our quarterbacks. Here we're getting a, a blood or boom boom stunt, depending on the, your terminology. And there he goes through the hands of the, uh, of the B-back. Okay. So on option drill, um, only thing that I, I wanted to pull up film here to show that's a little bit different. Uh, here you can see we've moved in 2019 that uh, agile bag out a little bit to where the quarterback really has to push around collision and we do not want him, hit, want him getting downhill until he passes uh, this tackle cone. Uh, we felt like watching um, option drill the previous year and watching some film, our B back, or excuse me, our quarterbacks were getting downhill too fast. On this day, uh, I can remember we did not have enough B backs uh, to be the collision guys. That's why you don't see the agiles. And uh, we all know that that happens sometimes. And so just wanted to show the difference in the agile bag more than anything. Uh, other than that, the setup of our cones uh, has not changed. Um, let's go to inside. Our inside drill uh, is something we utilize for our belly scheme and a whatever counter play we might be carrying uh, for that season. You know, sometimes it's been counter ISO, other times it's it's been a trap. There's been there's been multiple things that that we've utilized, uh, but typically uh, this is a big place where we're going to um, rep our belly scheme. So during our inside period, uh, why are we doing it? Uh, for belly encounter, it's everybody but our receivers. So during this time, they're getting uh, individual work. We will utilize this depending on the time of year, one to two times a week, and it'll be 15 minutes at a time. Now, depending on how much three-man surface and two-man surface we're doing will depend on what these fits look like. So to a three-man surface, uh, we're going to have a three, five, nine, and kick. Uh, then we're going to go to a 2i7-8 log or a shade 5-9 log. Then we're going to go uh, to an odd front 0-4i-9, and we're going to uh, have that uh, 9 run upfield and, and have our guy run his track instead of chasing him. Um, at first, we do tell our kids what's coming, but we don't want to trick them. We want to get good at what we're doing. And then as time goes on, we will switch up whether those are kick or logs uh, so it doesn't stay the same the whole time. And our uh, two-man surface, we're going to have four fits there, a uh, three-five kick, a two-I-5 with a log, and then we're going to give two different fits on the uh, uh, odd front because we believe that those are uh, probably the most difficult to be able to see uh, between a kick and a log. Again, we do not utilize our uh, backside A and, unless you are needing to work on timing or path. And then, um, like I said, we will vary the kick and the log. Uh, I didn't say it on group pod, uh, but it fits this as well. Uh, once your kids, you know, you get into maybe year two or you're, you know, you're down the road and kids being comfortable, you know, you can start stemming your fronts, you know, so you don't just have to sit in a three and a five. You may start in a head up and stem to a three. Uh, we do work that as well when our kids get comfortable so that they can work stemming fronts um, because that happens. It happens in a game uh, quite often, actually. So here is uh, the setup to a, uh, an inside drill with a three-man surface. This could be a tight end, or this could be a heavy set with a receiver and a, and a tackle over. But our O-line coaches are going to play one and two. Our next guard is going to play the three. Our backside guard and backside tackle, and, and uh, the next center is going to be on the backside so we can work scoop angles. Our A-back coach is always going to be the play side backer because that's where the play side A is going on our belly scheme. And then the quarterback coach will a lot of times be out here working uh, the quarterback on fakes. 
Our second fit is a 2i78 uh, log. And this does not mean that this is a look we're getting. Again, the purpose of these drills is to give these positions all the different looks they could get. So we wanna be able to give this tackle a look at getting a, an A-gap player where he has to really get flat on that, on that down block. Uh, you know, it's really easy with a three set right on top of him, but move that guy on down and, and let him work his angles. Uh, we want to make sure that this extra tackler tight end gets a seven uh, because, you know, those, those seven techniques, you can treat them multiple ways depending on how you're teaching it. Uh, so we, we just want to be able to give multiple looks on this. Uh, we're going to create a log scenario. Uh, I can tell you on this one, number two is going to act like he's running to pitch. Uh, again, we're just trying to give our kids a look uh, that could happen uh, to their technique, not necessarily what a whole defense is doing to us each and, each and every day. And then the third fit here, uh, an alternate fit, is, excuse me, to the 2i78 would be a shade 5.9. Um, uh, extra uh, next guard would be the shade. Our O-line coaches and A-back coaches are there. Um, and then we have uh, the last fit that we would always do would be an uh, odd front. So we'd have a zero and fours. I always choose to do fours just because they can go either way and allows our kids to, to have to think and work on what they're doing here as they're uh, performing their technique. Um, that's, that's how we do the three-man surface. Now, if we're working straight two-man surface, and, and we have done a combination, you know, we, we will typically do the first fit as a uh, if we're doing a combination, first fit is a three-man surface, and then the next two or three fits is a two-man surface. But if we're doing straight two-man surface, this is what it would look like. We'd have on the front side a three and a five, and we're going to get a kick scenario. So one's going to run upfield. We're going to get a quick kick, and our A-back is going to see open window, meaning that one went out. He's going to fit underneath to the uh, play side backer. Uh, we have our backside scoop angles. We teach our B-back on belly uh, to have eyes on number one. And so he's going to uh, – this is a really important drill for us where we ask our O-line coach or our ABAX coach that's over here to stand and see the B-back to make sure his eyes are on number one. We allow him to uh, kind of read that so he knows by the time he gets the ball whether he's going to be vertical or if he's going to have to get around a log. Uh, the next fit for us in a two-man surface is a 2-I-5. 2-I-5 uh, is going to be a log scenario, so we're going to get a – uh, a heavy five, you know, really uh, closing on that uh, down block, and we're going to get him logged. So now the A-back's going to see a close window, and he's going to step with his outside foot around that and get to the play side linebacker. Um, the next fit would be a 0-4 with a kick. So on this one, we can um, play it out multiple ways, but the first way would be uh, closing with number one and then number two closing hard, where – we end up washing and kicking number two, open window, A back on the play side backer. And then the last fit uh, for the two-man surface would be a log scenario uh, where we get um, number, uh, number one uh, goes down extremely hard with a down block, number two goes down extremely hard, and we end up logging. Uh, but the, the whole point of this is to show that we got to give our kids multiple, multiple looks because we never know – uh, what's coming in, in a week, uh, a game week. So we have to show them what they may uh, or may not see. Um, so let's look at belly here um, to a three-man surface. So here's the first look. Uh, we have a three, a five, and a nine uh, set up here. Here's our A-back coach. This is actually our quarterback coach on, on this day. Uh, our our A-back is set up wrong. We we set up on the uh, uh, inside leg of the uh, tackle here. Uh, he's, he's set outside, and they'll do that sometimes. They'll just forget to, to see. There's the next group, the A-back's correct on this one. So we should get a down, a down, and we like to be lateral on the down. And we have a ch what we call check mark, and he's going to uh, kick this nine. The A back should fit off the uh, extra tackle or the tight end, depending on what you're using, off of this down block to the play side backer. And the uh, B back for us is going to go six inch uh, lateral with a crossover, uh, crossover lateral step and then uh, hit it downhill. 
And that's what happens when a guard does not get out of the way. But he didn't use his technique as far as a check mark step. He tried to get out of there too quick and ran into everybody. And then the B back ran into him. Uh, great, great teaching moment for, uh, for the group. We did run that one back and allow him to get himself corrected and, and uh, get that rep corrected. Here's belly to a um, odd front. Uh, we got a zero, a four, and a nine. Uh, here the four closes, the nine closes, and we log it. And the B-back sees that and gets it to the outside. The A-back sees that, and he's able to fit uh, to the play side backer out of a closed window scenario. And then we run it right back, and here is the nine technique now getting up field. Uh, for us, what we teach on the check mark is we're going to try to get more into the line of scrimmage. We, we really don't want our guy chasing out here. If he's really wide, we're going to go ahead and track vertical and get up field. And so the, I know that would have been a correction in our offensive line meeting the next day. Okay, here we gave a scenario of a four technique going out. This, this happens. Boom, we kick him. Uh, our B back uh, obviously was not watching number one to get downhill quick because right there would have been our scene. And so, again, we're just able to utilize these different fits to show our offensive line and our B-backs uh, better uh, scenarios that they can utilize. You know, we ran this one back and was able to get him to see the correction. You know, the big thing is not what we know, but getting the kids to understand what we're teaching. And so we want him to be able to see that if that four eye, or excuse me, that four slants out, that guard's going to kick him and we're going to get vertical. And then it's all the uh, same stuff just to the left. And then we would have normally another scheme right after that because this is a 15-minute uh, a period. Uh, the next uh, practice drill that we would do on this day is our half-line period. That's going to be a 20-minute period. Uh, in this, in this uh, setting, we're going to have all people, and we're going to rep multiple fronts and, and tags is why we're doing it. We're doing it three times a week. We believe half line something that we've got to do every day. And uh, early on, that script's going to be triple, mid-triple play action and double option. When our kids get comfortable or like we are going into year four, uh, you know, you'll see on, I think, practice film, we mix those four plays up because we go right side, left side, right side, left side. And we got to where, you know, some kids, you know, were, were getting a little uh, complacent and just watching what the other guy did. So we uh, made it to where right side might do triple and left side might do play action. So they got the same four plays, but in a little different uh, order. So for instance, um, here we've got a four, two setup. Um, the C's again are gonna represent the cones that we utilize in practice. Uh, we always have a cone where the center is. And if I remember right, uh, that's four steps inside the hash on each side. Uh, and then from there, we're going to count another four steps and set a cone for both A-backs to utilize uh, in half line. So over here, we've got our right side, and we've got uh, both set of A-backs. Uh, over here, we've got our left side. We've got our uh, second center, our second quarterback, our second B-back, and our uh, second A-backs. Or you can mix up your skill kids. You know, it's, it's your choice. But we're utilizing four A-backs, two B-backs, two quarterbacks two centers. Uh, so we'll go four plays, uh, excuse me, we'll go play to the right, play to the left, and we'll do that four times, and then we'll run a second group out there. So you'll have a, a whole new offensive line, and then the backfields just switch so that they get the plays both ways. As you can see, we stay with the theme of our coaches playing read keys. So our offensive line coaches are the uh, D linemen, uh, here in a 4-2, number one in the inside uh, D lineman. Our A-back coach is the play side backer. Our quarterback coach is number two. And then either a wide receiver coach or a kid is the safety or corner, depending on what we're working that day perimeter-wise. Soon as that plays over, all those same people run over to the left side and do the exact same thing. Uh, so there is a little cardio involved here for the guys playing read keys. But we just feel like that's what gives our kids the best chances seeing those, uh, those specific things. And it's all scripted out on our practice script. Each day our coaches have what they are uh, uh, going to do uh, as far as what we're giving our kids play-wise and read-wise. Here it's set up to a 4-3. Uh, 
again, not, not a whole lot to, to look at as far as uh, differences. It's just a matter of where coaches go. We add a Mike linebacker as an A-back coach. If you don't um, uh, have two wide receiver coaches, you can have uh, kids do that. But we do think number one and number two have to be uh, coaches to get the proper reads. And then the last setup is just uh, to a 50 front uh, where we have a zero, a four I, and a nine. And then when our ABEX coach, our wide receiver coach slash kid is the secondary guys. And again, it's all front side oriented uh, things. So let's, let's look at a few clips um, from a half line so that you can kind of get a visual of uh, what's going on. So here, uh, the clip actually starts on the left side. Uh, again, you can see the setup of coaches all here. Uh, there's actually no kids on the field at this time. We, uh, we're pretty blessed with a big staff. And so all those guys are coaches. We're running mid triple to a four, two front uh, on their script. They were told whether we were being upfield or closing uh, coach, our, one of our O-line coaches here is doing a great job of giving this tackle a look and getting hands on. Our uh, second A-back coach here is going to give a, a good look at uh, being on path of, of the B-back. And then we're going to give a perimeter look here by our A-back coach so that uh, our A-back uh, can see what he needs to see out on the perimeter. Here on the right side, we've got a play action on to a 4-2. We were wanting to work a scheme of our uh, ABEX path on a, uh, an aggressive safety. And so our quarterback coach does a good job of giving that look so he can have his eyes on the quarterback while up front we're working uh, one of our pass protections. Now we've gone to the left and we're working a double option. Again, uh, on this series of plays, we're not staying in order. I do recommend the triple, mid-triple play action and double option order if you're first implementing this. Uh, if you're a veteran team that uh, has been doing it a while, I, I just started mixing it up this year and I thought it made the focus of our 20-minute segment much better uh, because we're going to get a lot of reps during this segment and, and got to keep kids' attention somehow, some way, and, and I felt like this did it. Uh, so here's a double option to the 4-2. We're running our G option uh, here, and our, our A-back coach does a good job of of uh, giving a look, he skates out, slow play, then he attacks a quarterback, we get the ball pitched, and uh, it's, it's a good play on film. Now we go to the right side, they've got mid triple on, mid triple's already been ran by the left side, but here we go on the right side uh, to get that look and giving them what they need. And again, all of this is done by a, a script of our coaches that is pre-planned typically on a Sunday of a game week, and Practice scripts are done for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday uh, ahead of time. Here's double option uh, to, the, to the right side now that we've already seen on the, uh, on the left side. Here's the play action on the left side that we've already seen. You can see coaches jogging over. Uh, what we try to do is I'm standing in the back calling out the plays to the offense, and we want our kids down and ready, even though we're not on this play. Uh, basically waiting on the coaches to get there so that we can move at a rapid pace. So there, uh, I'm going to fast forward through the 4-2. Uh, uh, we're going to get through all those with, uh, with the ones and the twos, and then we're going to get to the 50 front, okay? And I'm not going to bore you with watching all these clips uh, because we're not in schemes today. We're talking practice, uh, but – now we're going through our 50 script with our ones and our twos. And so, you know, we're going to get these uh, four plays to each side before we change. Um, you can see here in this script, we're working our eye formation. Um, you know, so we're able to work many, many things as far as formation, uh, a few formations. We don't get into a lot of formations. It's typically spread, flex, and eye for us. Uh, but we're going to work an enormous amount of tags versus different fronts so that that's where we get our, uh, our practice. So then we go all the way through, uh, just clicking here through the 50. And then our third uh, script of the day is bare front. So now you're going to see a zero, a three, a five, um, a, a 30 linebacker, a high safety, and a corner. And so then we're going to get 
all the plays through that. Uh, there you can see the backfield switching uh, over to the other side, and here we go. So it's about 48 reps, uh, I believe, is what we typically get in uh, that 20 minute segment. And it's a great way for our kids to be able to get ready for whatever they're going to see uh, because we don't know what it's going to be. So we're going to see three fronts a day, um, both groups, first and second group. And we think that's a huge key to our uh, kids being prepared uh, for a Friday night when they have no idea what they're going to see. Uh, the last drill that, that I'll share, and this is the, the biggest day of drills, is, is on Monday. Um, is our team pass, and it's not um, not anything super uh, groundbreaking, but we do have um, fits for that as well. We're kind of a, a fit place, meaning we're going to have some intentionality to, to how we're doing things. But in team pass, it's going to be everybody. We're working our pass protections and our fits. Uh, we're going to try to do that two times a week, 15 minutes a piece. Uh, the fits that we do, uh, first fit, you're going to see a 4-2, and we're going to A or B pop out of that so that we can uh, let our kids see the different stunts. Uh, then we're going to see a 50 front. We're going to get a boom boom or what some refer to as a blood stunt where one and two come hot off the edge. Then we're going to see a 4-3. Uh, we'll get a lightning or an A or a B pop depending on, you know, what's going on that day, what we want to see. And then we're going to jump into a rebel front that gaps everything out. And so kind of what that looks like here, uh, real quick, there's a 4-2. Now on this, we're utilizing all kids, and you'll see on film, it'll make more sense. And then we're gonna have one or two coaches over here that is helping those kids get lined up. Uh, in our 4-3, four, four, again, our, our coaches are gonna get these kids lined up. Our O-line coach is in charge of setting his front where he wants it, whether it's shades or two eyes, three, whatever he would like. And then we've got another coach usually directing the linebackers uh, off the script that we've made. And then uh, there's a 50 front. So again, it's not anything super uh, complicated, but we're going to have a rhyme to the reason of, of what we're doing. So let's watch just a few cut-ups of uh, team pass. This is not going to be a full, full go unless there's a rare moment that we want to do that. We have done it, but most usually – it's more of a recognition type thing. And so you're not going to see kids going full go and putting kids to the ground. We're wanting to identify and make sure that we understand where we fit in the pass pro. As far as uh, formations, we're going to use all formations. Uh, we're going to use a bunch of routes. We're not going to utilize secondary. Uh, there's no reason to put a secondary over here and for our kids to get false reads. Uh, so we, we do it with no secondary. Here's a mid-triple play action pass uh, based off 4-2, and we brought a B-pop. And again, we're working um, different, different pass protections for what we uh, do or, or may do for that week. Here's uh, our triple um, play action. Now we're on to a 50 front. Uh, number two comes off the edge. Our B-back recognizes and, and picks him up. Now we're into our rebel front where we've got 10, 10 linebackers, threes and fives. They're, you know, everybody's gapped out. We want to show them something that everybody's gapped out and how we would fit. And then now our twos are in. So we went, uh, I believe, three plays and then uh, brought our twos in. And then they would get, uh, I believe, two plays. No, they, they got all three. And then our, our ones would return and we would uh, get on to the next three, uh, three play script. So team pass, again, is a, is a recognition tool for us to where people can um, kind of identify where, uh, where they need to be and, and be able to get some good work on team pass. All right, so that's Monday. Again, that was gonna be the longest day of this uh, presentation just due to the amount of stuff. Uh, our Monday would end with if we serviced, uh, got service from our defense, uh, and that would be our Monday. Tuesday looks like this. Uh, it's uh, 14 periods of offense. Our team opener is going to be a third and medium that we talked about earlier, individual for two. Option drill on this day is going to be the eye formation. Uh, so that's where we're going to get our work out of the eye. We're going to have our jet toss boot period for 15 minutes. Uh, team pass again. 
our half line on this day that we will not go through, but on this day it was a 6-1, a bear, and an, an exotic front. So it could be a rebel front. Uh, there's, there's multiple exotic fronts that we have in our little uh, uh, playbook that we like to show our kids. And so, you know, we're going to get different fronts on that day in half line than we got the previous day. So by the end of the week, our kids have seen a, a multitude of different fronts um, through that. So let's look at uh, the one thing on here that's different that we haven't seen is our jet. So we, we do run uh, the jet sweep as well as the toss. So that's why it's uh, here. It used to be just toss boot period. Uh, we only ran the toss, but we also run the jet. Um, so the why of this is timing. It's all about timing for us. Uh, everybody's included. We only do this once a week for 15 minutes. And so you can see that's about five minutes of toss, five minutes of jet, five minutes of play action. And the only other place we get those plays is in a team mix uh, period. The standard way for us to do this, which is not on, gonna be on the practice clips that I'm gonna show you, is we're gonna get it in our base spread set where two, two receivers are out wide and our base flex bone formation. And we're gonna run just normal toss. Uh, and we're gonna get that to where we uh, circle. You know, we're gonna make that a circle to where it stretches. Then we're gonna uh, run our flex uh, set and we're gonna swap it where we block number two and get our tackle around, our A back out on the corner. Then we're gonna get in flex and we're gonna run our jet sweep. And then our fourth would be our play action. Uh, that can vary if you're struggling with one thing or the other, depending on uh, what's going on. Uh, just one diagram here. Uh, we don't have um, a lot of people out here. We're going to have our O-line coach uh, over our tackle where he can uh, uh, be a guy that works on his release, on how we teach that. Our A-backs coach is going to play number two so that he can uh, give his A-back the looks he needs to see. And then our wide receivers coach is going to play corner so he can watch his receiver and, and make sure he does what he needs to do. O-line coach is going to be a backside backer because that's – who we're trying to pick up on the O-line sometimes, depending on what's going on. And then our quarterback coach, a lot of times, will play you know, the safety in the back uh, so that he can keep his eyes on everything. Uh, you can see here I've written huddle two and huddle three. Uh, group one's going to run a play, and as soon as they snap it, uh, group two's going to be running to the line of scrimmage. We're going to get a ton of reps during this, and we're going to go one play at a time in this triangle of rotating where um, – these kids are running the line of scrimmage and, and getting up there and getting ready for the next play. So as we look here for um, some cut-ups of this, I, like I told you, it's not going to be in the standard order here. Uh, here we're in the eye. We're running toss. On this day, we actually had some kids backside initially uh, and front side for uh, angles because we want to make sure we check the gap next to us. Uh, I believe we were struggling a little bit of checking the gap, so we wanted to give some visualization for that. So here we go, run and toss, okay? O-line coach is gonna make sure to give the look he needs to give, whether it's running with one or letting one clear him. The uh, coach here is gonna make sure that uh, he is getting in a position uh, to give the A back a proper look. And then the uh, wide receiver coach is on the outside. Here comes the next group. Again, just working fits and timing. I'm going to fast forward a little bit here, uh, get us on to the next. That day we were in a 4-3 alignment. Doesn't mean we're always in that. Here we're, we're now in our jet sweep, so we're in flex, working our jet sweep. And again, it's timing. For us, we want to hand that in the play side A gap. So, you know, we want to be able to see that on film. That's why we're doing it at this angle. We always want to do it on the 10 because we want to practice down here where we're scoring. We want to uh, be very uh, efficient with these plays uh, and understand that these are scoring type plays. So that's why we choose to do it down here. And again, we're going to go three groups uh, to, to each play, to each fit. Uh, sometimes we'll work formations. So here we're, we're working our over formation and we're doing it off of a hatch. So we're working our jet sweep. We want to identify that this is a 4-3 with a stack so our A-back identifies that, uh, gives him the identification tool to be able to get him while we're running our jet sweep to the field. Uh, again, the primary uh, point of this drill is timing, and then the secondary um, point of this drill is the fits of how we fit according to what we're doing. Uh, this is uh, 
toss out of flex. Again, this is the film I pulled up. I wasn't looking for, for clinic talk uh, tape. So this is just the folder that we, that we had. We're in the eye, so we're not seeing the mechanism of motion. You know, when we're running our toss of where we want to be, that's a big thing for our toss drill. Uh, but here we're being able to see, you know, when he leaves and, and looking for the uh, perimeter stuff for the receiver on number two and the tackle clearing uh, the swap and then the corner blocking the, uh, excuse me, the place out eight blocking the corner. So uh, that's our, our jet toss boot period. It's very uh, cut and dry, it's very simple, but it's something that we want on film to be able to utilize to see um, the, the timing um, mechanism. Um, so now let's go to Wednesday. Uh, we're getting close here to, to wrapping this thing up. Um, as we go to Wednesday, Wednesday for us is a no sweat Wednesday approach. Uh, we're gonna do a lot of mental work, uh, we're gonna uh, choose to be in sh helmet and shoulder pad, but we're not going to be sprinting. It's just a practice approach that we utilize. It's going to be 12 periods, and we're trying to do a lot of mental work. So on this day, we're going to do what we call Bible period, and, and uh, I believe I've, I've got some film to, to show you that. It's nothing uh, huge, but it's a big recognition point for us. Uh, this is the day we're going to do our three-on-three -three and load pod, and I want to cover that and make sure you you understand that one because I think that's a great teaching tool. Jail breaks for us are, are things that we may want to carry that week for uh, specials or, or um, change of momentum type plays. And so we're going to practice those for 10 minutes uh, in a, a non-sprinting uh, uh, situation. And then we've got uh, 25 minutes of situations. We want to be able to uh, walk and talk. Uh, we like walking and talking with our kids at times on different things. And then we want to be able to run through without sprinting our goal line, our third medium, our fourth and short, fourth and medium, and then any rare tags that we may need to cover that, that we feel like we haven't got to cover in a few weeks. Uh, so our Wednesday is a huge um, thinking type day for us. Uh, so let's go to just play and let's look at our uh, Bible period. Uh, Bible period is, is a, a time for us to have recognition of stemming fronts uh, everybody's involved in this. It's only one time a week and it's only 10 minutes. The fits for that, uh, our defense is all coaches and it'll move, they'll move from front to front. So the diagram is here. Uh, we'll have all of our coaches playing on the read side of things and all of our kids will be on the back side, but we will have all 11. So for instance, here's a 50. They may, they may stem from a 50 to a 4-3. Uh, they may stem from a 4-3 to a 4-2, a 4-2 to a 50, a, a 50 to a 5-1-5. And our quarterback is built around, we're not a big check team, but we do have things in place to where if we're getting stemming fronts and it's late in the um, play clock, he can put us into what we think is an optimal play to that. And so that's why we utilize this period uh, is for, for stemming fronts. So uh, let me pull up the clip here, uh, show stemming fronts. Uh, here you can see uh, defense is in a 50 and um, he's gonna run a play that, that uh, he checked to. Then the very next uh, play they have stemmed already. Uh, sorry, it's not on film, but they have stemmed to a 4-3. So he's identified He's called the play that he thinks is uh, best for that situation, and we've ran the uh, play to a 4-3. Now you can see the defense milling around. He recognizes it as a 5-1-5. You can see him at the line of scrimmage. He's given the verbiage to the lineman of what they need to know, and here comes uh, a 5-1-5 play. Uh, again, coaches are stemming around. He identifies the front. Uh, He'll see that it's a 4-2 uh, based off of how the quarterback coach and myself have taught him to identify fronts. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he'll call the uh, best play that we, that we believe against that front. Uh, here is an odd stack, a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, he's going to identify that front and get into a play that he thinks is best. So uh, the Bible period is, again, a uh, mental – period. It's a recognition. It's something that we utilize to help our kids 
uh, get ready for a stemming front. Uh, the next uh, drill that, that we like uh, to do on this day is our three on three drill. Uh, let me pull that up here. Three on three is our guards and centers, our quarterback and our B back. Uh, it's um, used to get repetitions of all the different techniques that those guys will see. We do it once a week. Uh, there's two different fits to this. If you're early on in implementing, or, or for me, if I'm in the fall camp, I'm gonna go through our standard script uh, that I'm gonna show you in diagram. And then as we get into season, we have what we call our exotic uh, script. And so I'm gonna go through these diagrams and make a little more sense. So the first fit, and I've got this diagram right where we would be, we'd be on the five yard line going into the end zone and we'd be on a hash so that the ball is always in a consistent place. Huddle two is standing over here on this hash, 10 yards back. Huddle three is 10 yards back where the numbers would be. And so we've got uh, three different groups of these players. Now, the uh, defense is all played by the next guy, or excuse me, the guy that just went. So if I'm a left guard, I'm playing this backside two eye right now. If I'm the next center, I'm this backside linebacker. If I'm the next B back, or I'm, or excuse me, if I'm the B back that just went, I probably said that wrong. If you just went, you're playing these positions. So ran the play, and then you come over here and you play this position. And here we have a three, two, uh, three and a two eye. Uh. And so we're running our triple and our zone dive rules, which for these players is exactly the same. There's nothing different between triple and zone dive. So he's going to base, he's going to get half an A, he's going to scoop. He's going to read his action key and receive the ball, and it's going to be a sink uh, every time we run it. Then the next fit for us on the standard script is a three and a shade with a backside. So now we're getting the same uh, fit over here as far as three. Backer scoots out now. Uh, we're going to get a tight scoop and a long scoop so that we tight scoop and run into this backside backer. Again, this whole thing is about showing your kids every technique that they could see and where they would fit. And again, as the B-back coach, I don't have to watch the B-back. I know that if he's not in A-gap, that something was wrong on, on his fit. Uh, the next fit is a two-eye on the front side and a three-back side. So we're doing all these to the right right now. So we've got a two-eye, we've got a three-back side, and now I know that's a sliding square, get it into B-gap outside of that base block on a two-eye. The next fit, Again, we're still on the right side, is a shade front side, three back side. So now we're gonna get a combination call right here with an ace between our guard and our center. We're gonna get a backside three, so that's a tight scoop to the backside linebacker. And we're gonna get a sliding square outside of this. Now we have to educate our kids on, hey, that B back, or excuse me, that play side linebacker would be blocked by our play side tackle, uh, depending on where he fits. So it's gonna look like he's running free uh, when we're, when we're doing this drill, but they become easily educated uh, pretty quick after doing this a couple times. And then the last fit of our standard script is an odd front, a zero and a four. And we're gonna uh, talk to our guard, whether this is a, a single scheme or a double scheme uh, on this. And then we're gonna get a sliding square if it's a, if it's a double and we're gonna get our fits. So again, every group, what we just did is going through each of those fits. It's very, very quickly. Uh, it's, it's happening very fast. We're not trying to uh, make this a, a big running drill. We are saying that everybody's got to finish through the goal line at full speed. That's why we do it here. Again, we're going to practice getting into the end zone. We're going to do it full speed. We're going to do it with great pad level. Uh, years ago, I will tell you, I've done this as a conditioning drill to where it was at 10 yards, and they had to go through 10 yards. And, uh, and that, was, uh, that was most definitely a toughness drill, uh, but we have uh, nullified that and, and gone to more of a five yard. Now, I'll show you our exotic script. I think this is great for confidence of your kids. You know, anytime they see something squirrely on a Friday night, they've probably already seen it in practice. So our exotic script, we're gonna start out with what we call a rebel front, where those linebackers are standing up uh, at most the heels of at the defensive linemen. Uh, they're in what we call tens outside shades and the uh, defensive linemen are in three techniques. And so we're gonna run our play um, to the right with that particular look with all three huddles. 
Then we're gonna get to the second script of the exotic front, which we call two stack. So we're gonna get head up twos and the backside backer and play side backer are right on the hips and they are hip tapping these guys. Wherever they tap them, the defensive lineman fits one gap and, and the uh, linebacker fits the other. So these can unfold a million different ways, but it allows this B back to utilize his action key, which to the right here would be this uh, uh, T, this tackle, no matter where he goes, he's the action key, but it allows the guards and centers to have some comfort of understanding, hey, these guys can go wherever they want and I'm gonna trust my track and fit properly. So all three groups would go through that. And then the last one we call bear stack. So we're gonna get a bear front zeros and threes and we're gonna get a backer on the hip of that zero and he's gonna again hip tap him where they gap exchange and we run our, our tracks. The biggest thing with the exotic fronts is running tracks and trusting your track. And I feel like when you do that, um, you know, once we get in our season, we're gonna do this once a week and we're gonna do it in a way that makes our kids comfortable and it's gonna give them uh, some confidence to where if they see something on a Friday night that's different, they don't freak out and think, oh no, what are we doing? So here's some clips of uh, three on three with a standard front. Again, I'm gonna go through these quickly. I don't wanna uh, take up too much of your time. A three technique, a two eye, backside backer, front side backer. And again, this is a, a, a right guard, this is a left guard, this is a center, and this is uh, our B-back. You know, here was one of our offensive line coaches and here was myself. <clears throat> so we are uh, doing this for fits and recognition. Sorry, shade got cut off. So now we're into the second fit, two I three. Our B back forgot to be over there. You can see them talking right down here. Some somebody was wrong, um, and and we utilize this too for you know accountability with teammates. Here's a front side shade, back side three, and then we go to the left side. Uh, now, we do all of this with uh, what I said, triple and zone dive rules, but then we get into the exact same fits and utilize our midline schemes. So whether it's midline double or midline triple, for this group of players, the rules are the same. And so now once we get into the midlines, typically we have a coach be the read key, or we can coach up the kids and tell them who we want there, and we're going to go through the same fit. So here's a three and a two I, and we're going to fit that. Here's a three and a shade, midline. Here's a three and a two eye. And some, some things are, are not ideal as far as technique right now, but again, we're just talking practice. This is not a, definitely not clinic talk as far as clinic film. Here's our exotic front. Uh, rebel front and we're running our triple zone dive rules as far as the play now here's our two stack so the guys in the back are tapping wherever they tap that defense lineman goes and they fit the opposite so when you freeze it now you're able to teach kids run your track trust your track uh, block who shows we have a lot of different ways of saying you know what we're trying to accomplish on this and it's obviously not a physical drill you can see this is this is done without pads. Now here's bear stack. We got threes, we got a zero and a backer right behind him, gap exchanging. And then we do it to the left. And now we come back and do the exact same thing with the midlines. Okay. And now I'm serving on this day as a pitch key uh, so that we can get some pitches in if it if it was a, a pull read. Now here's bear stack, red give. So we're, we're, we're just trying to get our kids, again, multiple, multiple looks and allow them to understand, uh, you know, what's the different fits uh, that they could see. The uh, second part of this is our uh, load concept. 
with our A backs and tackles. So you can see on this tape down here was our three on three. Uh, and we were in the middle of the field for some reason that day. And while that's going on, our right tackle and right A would be over here. And our left tackle and our left A would be over here. And they're working on this day zone dive. They're working what it looks like uh, to get the different fits they're going to get on zone dive. So here they're working a, what we would call a skin technique, power veer and the A back getting inside. And they're utilizing this time to work their combos. There, there was a cross face and the A back got too far inside. He should have actually been over the top. So I'm um, not going to go through a, a whole lot of these. I'll go back to the just play uh, diagrams. But this is the way that they can get uh, their mental work, just like the group with the guards and centers quarterbacks are getting theirs. So what we call load pod is tackles and A's uh, one time a week, same time we're doing three on three. And typically we're going to get these fits. We're going to get zone dive fit, a skin and a cross face. Uh, they're going to get their load fit uh, off of our triple with a play side backer plugging or scraping with a free safety run in the alley. And then for us, we're going to get our belly of open and close windows. And diagram wise, it's pretty simple here. Uh, we've got right side here, left side here. Coaches are in the middle of our tackles and A's. And then we've got uh, A backs playing backers and an A backer tackle playing uh, a, a high safety, whether it's one high or too high. Uh, the other thing on this day was jail breaks, and, and I don't have any film to show you on that. Uh, like I told you before, those are just some specials that we have that we work throughout the week um, for, uh, for jail breaks. Uh, the last day of the week, uh, let me share that PowerPoint once again, is Thursday for us, and this is a, uh, a practice day in shells, uh, helmet, shoulder pads, and girdles. We're going to get uh, 30 minutes in the morning because we have first hour of uh, option drill and group pod. Uh, and then we're going to get 30 minutes in the afternoon prior to our team sprint through of zone option pod and half line. Uh, and then after that, we have what we call our team sprint through. A lot of people, uh, you know, mock game, all the scenarios, you know, running people on and off the sideline and, and the way we do it. Uh, our offense that day <clears throat> during that script gets five plays on the goal line uh, from the six from the three and from the one at different uh, times. We have a one minute drill that we set up uh, and that's gonna be for four plays. We have a four minute drill. We wanna make sure our kids understand how to operate in a four minute drill and what we're looking for. And then we have what we call perfect drive that starts on the uh, <clears throat> opposite five yard line and drives down the field, utilizing the hashes and that's 13 plays. So all together that's 26 plays we will run on what we call uh, team sprint through. Uh, let me click over here and uh, show you our zone option pod um, real quick. And um, we've got that and, and then we'll, uh, we'll be wrapping this thing up. So our zone option uh, is uh, self-explanatory. It's for zone option. It's all of our players because we utilize our receivers and the way we run zone option uh, one time a week, 10 minutes. Um, our standard way, and, you know, we've used zone option many ways. Three years ago, we ran it 99 times, and, um, you know, that quarterback is likely to be the starter at Navy this year. He, he was the backup last year as a freshman. Uh, you know, since then, we've not ran it near to that magnitude based on uh, our quarterbacks and what we uh, had as far as depth and maybe running abilities and different things. So, uh, last year, our fits was a 4-2 to a 3-5, a number two played outside of our flex receiver. Then we got into a 4-3 front with a 2-I-5, and number two was inside our receiver. And then we got into a 50, a 0-4-I, and number two was, uh, was outside our receiver. Again, uh, through these fits, we're wanting to show our kids multiple things uh, for them as individuals. So, for instance, this guard's going to see a 0, a 2-I, and a 3. You know, we think that that's important for him to understand what he does. Uh, so here's a diagram of a 4-2 to a 3-5. O-line coaches are playing the down lineman. A-back is uh, coach is playing the play side backer. We got kids on the backside for scoop angles. And our quarterback coach always plays number two. Um, our second fit is a 4-3 with number two inside. So uh, a hip backer. 
And, uh, you know, the positioning of those stay the same, but now we're in a two eye on the front side and a three back side. And then our third and final uh, fit for this year was a 50. We had zero four eye, and, and I actually drew up a number two inside because we had some rules that we worked right here with these two players, tackle and, and receiver, that we wanted them to be able to communicate. And, and most definitely we had our quarterback coach who played number two. He would jump in, jump out, be head up and, you know, make our kids apply their, uh, their different rules um, other than just standing there and, and being a, a stationary car. So here we go. We're in flex. Uh, we're in an even front, and number two is outside. So we're working uh, to a three technique uh, for our rules of what we're doing up front. B back ends up kicking number two, play side A on the play side backer. All the groups would go through that. Uh, however many groups you have, you know, and our number two guy will uh, change it up. He'll close hard. Sometimes he'll run up field and, you know, that'll change what our B back is doing. We just want to give that B back uh, because I do think he has a semi difficult job on, on this play. We want to give him multiple looks. And then there, there it goes to the left. So pretty, pretty simple. You know, we, we try not to get super complicated. We just try to be consistent with uh, the different things that, that we are uh, trying to accomplish. Um, you know, that I hope, you know, some of this was uh, helpful for you guys. Uh, I'm going to put my uh, contact information up here. Um, you know, I've just been really, really fortunate to be around some great coaches in the option world. Um, adapted a few things to fit what we've done in our program here at UConn or other places I've been. Um, but, but I enjoy sharing, you know, what we have done and, and how we've uh, been able to be successful running this offense in a, in a time that it's maybe not the most um, uh, sexy thing to do as kids see the ball be thrown uh, all over the place on, on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, but I do think that through our preparation each year and through our, uh, the way we practice has gave our kids a great chance for success. So uh, if, if myself or our staff can be any uh, assistance to you, feel free to reach out. And, and uh, you know, we love talking option football.